Hey everybody, so this is our next lesson in Sonic Pi. In the first lesson, we talked about using the play function to make sounds and the sleep function to add time so that we could have notes play one after another. So today we're gonna look at some other basic functions in Sonic Pi to change some other things about our code to make it a little more interesting than just using play and sleep. So the first thing we are gonna look at is how to change the sounds we are using, the synth sounds. So as of now, we just have this sort of seemingly regular beep. I have a little bit of code here, I'll play it for you. Okay, so it's always that beep sound. So one thing we can do is change, you could kind of think of it like the instrument. Now we don't really have options of instruments like saxophone or guitar, things like that. Since these are synthesized sounds or sort of digital, that's gonna sort of limit the options that we have, but we can still change some things. So the function we type to get that to happen is we're gonna write use lowercase u, underscore synth, okay? And then I'm gonna hit the space bar. And you will notice when I do that, this menu drops down. Now these are all the different synth sounds that we have available to us. So all the different like instrument sounds that we can use here in Sonic Pi, okay? Now I'll tell you right now, beep is the one that we are already hearing. So writing use synth beep is sort of redundant because we're already hearing that sound. So I don't even need to write use synth beep to hear that. But let's go down to the next one. Let's try blade here, okay? So use synth and there's always a colon in front of whatever our synth sound is. And there's always a space between the function and what we call the argument, the, the thing we need to tell the function to do. So if I run it now, So now I change the synth sound. So that already is giving me some options as to what I can do here. So I'm gonna go back. Now if I delete it, you see that that window doesn't pop up. So you could go back one more space and then hit space and it'll bring up that again. So I'm gonna try chip lead now. Okay, so just to go through. Now another way to do it, I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and while holding shift, I'm gonna press the space key and that will make that go up again. So now I'll try maybe this dark ambience. Okay, so you can experiment with all the synth sounds you want. Now let me just give you one more thing. There is, let's just say I wanna kinda of double up on this and I'm gonna, you can have some code play with one synth and then if you wanna change the synth later, you can go and do that. So let's try maybe this D saw, okay? Okay, so I can change the synth. Now what I don't need to do is write dark ambience again. Once you set the synth, it's gonna stay the synth. You don't need to rewrite it if you wanna keep that synth the same, okay? So I have my synth change now. Now let's say I want to make this go faster. Uh, I just want all my code to go faster. One way you might think about doing that is changing the sleep value, which I could do and I'll come back to that in a minute. But if I wanna change the tempo, remember tempo is measured in BPM, beats per minute. So to talk about that for one moment, when we look at the sleep one, didn't really get into what that one means in the last lesson. So sleep one, the one stands for one beat, okay? So it's not one second, it is one beat, okay? Uh, so that beat is gonna change, one beat will change in the amount of time depending on what our BPM is, our beats per minute, which we'll call our tempo. So to change that, I'm gonna use the function use lowercase u underscore bpm, okay? And that is gonna take a number and that will be our beats per minute. Now the default is 60. So even without me writing this, it's automatically gonna be 60 beats per minute, okay? Which in that case would make this one equal to one second, but only because there's 60 seconds in a minute. So our BPM would be one beat per second, okay? Uh, so let's try 80. All right, so I'm gonna go 80 beats per minute. 
So now it's a little faster. Let's try 100 beats per minute. Okay, let's try 120. Let's try 200. Okay, so, I mean, I could go up. You can get pretty high with it, but eventually your program might break. Uh, just That just means that it's not going to be able to keep up with how fast you actually want it to go. So if you have a lot of code and you try and do like BPM, like a thousand or something, your program might stop in the middle of it and just say it can't keep up and then you just need to make that change okay so we can also make it slower like i could do that so i can make my code run slower so all using bpm now one thing i will say if you're going to use don't do use bpm like one because that'd be one beat per minute meaning that if i am sleeping for one beat and it's one beat per minute i hit play it's also going to make the note seemingly last a lot longer This is still just one note, okay? I haven't even gotten to this note yet. And this is gonna go on for a full minute, okay? So I'm gonna stop it here because I don't have that kind of time, all right? Even if I'm home right now and not going anywhere, I don't have time to sit and wait one minute for this note to play before I have to hear the next note and then wait another minute for that to play, okay? So BPMs, I would keep it, you know, 30, 40 is about the lowest that you wanna think about going and then, you know, you can get up pretty fast, but keep that in mind, all right? So I'm gonna go, let's go use BPM 90 here, okay? Now, going back to changing the sleep value for a second, let's say I wanted to change all of these to something else. They're all one, I wanna change them all to like 0 0.5, okay? I could go through and change 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5. Okay, but say I have like a lot more code to go here. Uh, and if I decide to make changes, it's gonna take me a while to do that. So there's something in, uh, this is a coding thing, not just in Sonic Pi, but any kind of code is, I'm gonna make what's called a variable, okay? So a variable is me just basically making up a letter or a word that is going to hold a certain value. So if you've done like algebra, like X equals 10. So if I use X plus, five, if X is 10, then X plus five would be 15, all right? Uh, now you don't have to worry too much about like using math right now, but I'm gonna make a variable, I'm just gonna call it A. So to make a variable, I just write it A. Always start lowercase, you can't start a variable with a number, so just keep it simple for now. So A, then an equal sign, and I'm gonna put A equals one. Okay, so now what I can do is my, when I run my program, uh, the computer knows that I have made a variable called a and a has a value of one. So if I go into my code and do sleep for a and then sleep for a and then sleep for a, I run it. So it knows that when it sees a, it's just going to substitute the value for one. Now let me just uh, delete that for a second and run it. Suddenly I get an error message. Why? Because it doesn't know what A is because I haven't said A equals one. I just wrote an A here. So if you make variables but don't actually uh, what's called define them in the beginning, then you're going to get error messages. So if I go back and I include that, so A equals that. Now let's go back to where I wanted to change that to 0 0.5. I run it. So now I don't have to change every individual sleep to 0 0.5. I just change this one variable and every time it has A, it'll always switch that. So I could do like 0 0.25. Okay, I could make it two. All right, so that is another option that you can work into your code just to save you some time of editing and stuff like that, all right? So now one last thing I wanna do. Let's say I want to take this and I wanna play it like 10 times in a row. Now, at first you might be like, oh, okay, well you can just copy and paste it 10 times. And you could do that and that would work, but that would be an awful lot of code. And we always wanna be thinking about how can I make my code short and effective? Uh, so the least amount of code I can write and still get done what I wanna get done, right? So there is a way we can add repetition into our code. So I go to the top of where I want to start my code. 
uh, or the code I want to repeat. And I'm going to pick, let's say I want, I'm going to do it four times. So to do this, I'm going to write the number four, then dot, and then without a space, I'm going to write times. Okay. Now, this is a concept we're about to do that you really need to understand because it could lead to some error messages down the line if you don't get it right. This is what's called a block of code. Okay, so after times, I'm going to hit a space and I'm going to write the word do. So do is sort of the beginning of the block. It's setting up a spot where, uh, okay, everything that comes after this is part of this block of code that I can repeat or reuse or something like that. It's all kind of contained within the starting point, which is do, and then an ending point, which is actually called end. Okay, so every time you have a do, you need an end. Now you don't always need an end, only if you're gonna use commands that use them, which for example, right now, the only one you need to worry about is dot times, okay? This might be confusing. Uh, you can always message me if you run into problem with do's and ends, but uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that, okay? So now if I run it, I'm gonna stop, and for the sake of time, I'm gonna make this a little slower. Okay, so it repeated it four times. Now there's something I, I left out of here on purpose and I wanna point out, I'm gonna go to my log for a second. Now if you look at my log, it tells me all the notes that played here. So it's like played 67, it played that. But you'll notice quite a few times it has two notes that played a time, 70 and 60 at the same exact time. Now why is that? Why am I getting two notes? I, okay, so the thing is when I go back to repeat, it has this play here for 70. Now note there's no sleep here. So when it comes back around to play it again, it plays 60 at the same time. Because if we think about it, if I were to copy and paste this, like I had said before, I would get play 70 and then without a sleep, it would just be play 60. So it would play them at the same time, okay? Now maybe you want that to happen. I'm not saying that's a bad thing but I, or a wrong thing. I just want you to be aware. I don't want that to happen. I wanna have just that 70 play. So I need to make sure I have a sleep here. Now if I run it, so now it repeats and adds that space there. Okay, so no, it says four times, it plays through, it gets to the end, it, it goes around the second time, third time, fourth time, okay? Now just to show you, I'm gonna do maybe play, I'll do like 100, just to make a very clearly different note here. Uh, so that when it comes out after four times, it's gonna come and play this high note here. So let's listen one more time. Okay, so it did this four times. When it was done the four times, it then went to this play, okay? Now, just very quickly to show you something, I'm gonna leave this end out. I'm gonna do four dot times do, I'm not gonna put the end. If I run it, it gives me an error message. It says unexpected end of input expecting end, okay? Now it says line 24, but I don't have a line 24, okay? So usually when you see that, you're like, why am I getting an error for line 24 when I don't have it? It's because it's expecting to see the word end and it doesn't. Okay, so uh, you could put it here, but then it's gonna incorporate this play. So I'm gonna put end here, like I did, and that will fix it, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So also note, if you were to think, oh, I need another end here, and you run it, it's gonna, again, give you an error message for a line that doesn't exist. This time though, we have too many ends, so it will say unexpected end, which we don't need. So always think if you get one of these blue end lines, you don't have error messages, find out how many do's do you have. Every do should have an end. So if you have an end without a do, get rid of it and that'll fix it. Okay, so that is all for these basic functions. So we looked at use synth, which changes the synth sound. We looked at use BPM, which changed the tempo, the speed. We looked at how to make a variable. Uh, remember, a variable is really more effective if it's the same value you wanna use in a bunch of different places. 
it's not really worth it to make one variable called like a and then use it for just one play value you might as well just write the value there but it's very useful if you're going to use it over and over and then decide to change it uh, and then we looked at the repetition block so dot times do whatever is inside the do and the end will repeat however many times you specify for it so uh, in the Google classroom assignment I did it include just a quick little reference sheet here for all the things that we covered in this lesson including play and sleep but then variables use BPM use synth and the dot times do repetition block here so make your composition using all these different variables please don't just submit the exact thing i did play around with it change some play values play the change the number of times the bpm use some different synths try using multiple synths at different points okay be as creative as you can with this but when you're done you're going to copy and paste what you did remember control c or con command c depending on mac and windows and then you go into the submission document here and then control or command V will just paste your code in and then make sure you turn it in when you're done. Again, if you have any questions, things you wanted to do, but you weren't able, you weren't able to figure it out, you want to try something, but it's not working or problems you had, this is optional, but just leave a, a question and I'll answer it when I go and check in on that. So this is all for Sonic Pi this week. So have some fun, play around with it. Can't wait to see what you did. And we will talk next time.